uh, blue whale sounds are, are uh, really interesting. They're really repetitive. So that makes them easier to study because you can, they only, like Northeast Pacific blue whales have basically four vocalizations. They have a, a D call, which is what we think about as a, as a feeding call because it's often in, made in, um, in concert with feeding uh, behavior. Uh, it can be in other behaviors too. So we're not, you know, we can't narrow that down to like exactly the decal means this, but we see it often in, feed, in these feeding contexts and we see it from both males and females. And it's this low, it's this kind of a sweeping call. It's but really low frequency, more frequent, lower than I can do. Whereas it has these, what we call, think about as singing calls, which only that we think that only the males do. We've only really heard it from what we think are males. Um, and it's this AB pattern where you have this like, it's like a techno beat, but really low. And then it has a and so that's the A call and then the B call. And those can tra those are the ones that can travel really, really, really far. And they're actually so low frequency that you can't really hear it in the same way that a blue whale can hear it. But what you can do is feel it. And so you can basically feel the vibrations of your body moving around at that really low frequency. And so when we're out in the water, you can even hear it, sometimes feel it. You hear the whole, if we're still in the water and we know that there's blue whales around, we've actually felt uh, the, the vibrations in, these, in, these, uh, in the boats as the boat will vibrate. And we think that it's from the, the blue whale calling and actually feel that blue whale vibration in the water column. The blue whale calls are so cool because they, uh, they you can't hear them necessarily, but they, they actually, you know, they vibrate. They actually make these vibrations. And so one of the things, one of the discoveries that we've made um, is that when we put a tag on a whale to actually study what it's doing and how it's moving around, the blue whale call is actually so loud and such, uh, involves shaking so much that you can detect the call not on a microphone, but actually the vibrations of the call itself on the tag's uh, accelerometer. And so you can actually look at and measure these animals, these really low frequency vibrations on not on a microphone, but actually just on the motions of this of this call, and that helps us to identify if you if you just have a hydrophone in the environment, you don't necessarily know which animal is making the call. But if you actually put a tag on an animal, you can actually see the vibrations of that animal itself and think that that animal is making the call. So it's a one way to tell which animal is actually calling. There's big questions about well, what do these calls mean. We know that blue whales are all making, we're making these calls. We know that there's very similar calls to each other. Um, but how do they actually communicate and what responses do we have? And how can we, it's like hard to like, you can't really tap in and listen and see like that call and response from blue whales. Some of them, we might not even be able to hear if a blue whale is calling from very far away, but maybe a blue whale can hear it. And so how, what kinds of information are they gleaning from that? And how do they change their behavior? It's been really a challenge to study. And it's something we'd love to learn more about. It's like, how does a blue whale respond to another blue whale calling? One of the things we found is when you get big aggregations of blue whales, like we're talking like 40 blue whales in one square kilometer area, there's a lot of calling going on and more than you'd expect. And so one of the things we're thinking is like, okay, well maybe that's actually, if there's enough food, if there's so much food that these animals can uh, just kind of eat continuously, like a big buffet, but there's so much food that, they, that it, it disappears, not because the whales are eating it, but because the tides change or something about the environment changes, then it's actually kind of to the population benefit for all these animals to, to know where all this food is and they can help each other out by letting them know where the good food resources are and it's not competitive in that way. So that's one thing that we're thinking about. It's hard to kind of show that conclusively, but there's a lot of research to be done in like why these animals make these calls and how and how are they actually communicating with each other and what that means.